You got the middle of the week blues? This is a good place to hang out. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And today is Wednesday. It is September 4th. Which means tomorrow being Thursday, I've got that live streaming event, which I do every week, Thursdays at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my lovely co-host, Taylor, we go on for about an hour and a half, maybe a little longer, looking at stocks that you, the investors, want us to look at. I share hot penny stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to bring us some hot penny stocks, and we'll share them with everybody. I'm going to go over the information. Taylor will cover the charts, and we'll give you our opinions if that's what you're after. Now, if you really want your ticker looked at, you got to get it in the queue early, folks. I mean before 4 o'clock. I put up an announcement of this video earlier in the day around lunchtime, and people start dropping their tickers in then. I suggest you drop yours as well. By the time 4 o'clock rolls around, I've got all the tickers I can handle. But to be fair, what we've done is reserve two spots during the show for tickers that are being dropped, and Taylor's going to pick two of the hottest stocks, and we'll take a look at those. So we do look at about six or eight stocks through the whole show. That is 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Thursday, every Thursday. Now what we like to do on this show is focus in on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks on every single market. And I'm always looking for a hot penny stock, a stock that has potential to make us money. Normally, I find a chart that has a nice setup, try to match it up to some hot news. I've got myself a hot penny stock. And today, I found HEPA, H-E-P-A, Hepian Pharmaceuticals. Now, she is in an atypical breakout scenario. She's had light volume, but she's got a big catalyst. This is a biotech, and I normally wouldn't talk about biotechs because I hate reading the information, at least out loud. I can read it silently with no problem, but out loud gets to be tricky. But thank goodness I don't have to read a lot of technical information here. It's all about the merger. So HEPA, she finished today just a wee bit over 70 cents, and she was down almost 5% today. Now, this is a penny stock on the major exchange, so you're not going to have to pay for any of your transactions. You can trade it pre-market, after-market. There's a heck of a lot more money and volume up on that major exchange, as well as a lot more rules, which is good for us. That keeps the companies honest, keeps our investments safer. So, what is Hepi and Pharmaceuticals about? Well, they tell us here they are a biopharmaceutical company focused on the development of drug therapy treatment of chronic liver diseases in the United States. Now, to get more information about this company and the company that they're merging with, we're just going to dive into one of the most recent press releases. They've only got two, and we're actually going to look at them, two for the whole year of 2024. This one came out July 22nd. The company is a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company that has been developing a treatment for non-alcoholic steatal hepatitis, known as NASH. They are just winding down their phase two trials on this. They're also working with drugs for hepatocellular carcinoma, known as HCC, and other chronic liver diseases. You can go to their website. They've got quite a lot of information about the drugs in the pipeline and what stages that they're at. Today, the company announced it has entered into a definitive merger agreement with Pharma 2B, a late clinical stage private Israeli company that is developing P2B001, an innovative combination product candidate in development for the treatment of Parkinson's disease, an unmet need. Under the merger agreement, Hepion will become a wholly owned subsidiary of Pharma 2B. Once the merger is completed, they will operate as Pharma 2B, and they're going to get a new ticker as well. New ticker will be PHTB. So don't freak out when you come out here one day and throw in your ticker HEPA and it doesn't appear. That's because the deal's closed and they've got their new ticker, PHTB. Now that drug they're talking about up here, P2B001, is the whole reason that Pharma 2B is coming to the open market. They tell us here that the drug offers a novel, easy-to-use therapeutic approach that is designed to address the unmet need for an effective, safe, once-daily, no-titration-required treatment. 
as we advance the drug's development following the successful completion of the last trial, phase three, they're out of it. We believe it is the right time to enter the public equity markets. Well, heck yeah, you're coming out of research and development, coming out of successful clinical trials, moving into commercialization, making money. That's what it's all about here. We are excited about Pharma2B's next growth phase, moving the drug towards NDA, new drug application submission, targeted for the first half of 2026. That's a ways away. And making this potential treatment available to patients. Now, both companies are bringing money to the table once this deal is closed. Hepian has announced a private placement of $2.9 million. This is going to be done with non-convertible senior notes. Now, non-convertible means they got to pay this debt off with cash. They're not going to be able to pay it off with shares somewhere down the road because they'd have to create all those shares and the float would get a lot bigger. So we don't have to worry about that. Then you've got Pharma2B. They have secured a purchase agreement for $11.5 million. And the private placement is expected to close as soon as they close the merger. So all of this money is going to roll in. Now this merger is valuing the two companies together before the deal closes at about $58 million equity. And when we look at the financials, you're going to see that is a significant jump up from where we're at right now. This merger is expected to close in the fourth quarter of 2024. The other piece of news we've got came out uh, today. Oh, that's the catalyst then. Because they're telling us that they are filing the registration statement on Form F4. Now, this is a serious piece of the puzzle. This is a, a foreign issuer getting their stocks on the market. So this is a very important piece and they tell us that they're doing it. Now, I'll be honest, folks. It is when these mergers are in the process that we get the runs on the chart. Once these mergers close, I can't explain why, but so many of them crash. Once it's closed, they just come barreling down. But as they're putting them together and people see it coming together, they get excited. And with the chart being in a hot spot and this big piece of news, which it is a big piece, that's a very important filing there, we could see a nice push on the chart. We're not talking about a long hold, not even a long swing. We're talking about taking gains as she's climbing. If you see a strong run, something that looks abnormal, those are the ones you got to sell and get out of because you know they're going to crash and come back down to earth. So what was the relative volume around this company today? What? Oh, come on. You know, yesterday we looked at uh, SIFY, S-I-F-Y, and they didn't update this site. The price wasn't right, and I had caught that. But somebody had pointed out that the volume had not changed either. I had read a real small amount of volume, which was from the day before. It was a much bigger volume spike. I'm not real sure here. You know, you come with me here, folks. We're going to go on over to Yahoo. Let's see what the volume truly is on this stock because that just sounds awfully bloody low to me. All right, so we're over here at Yahoo Finance. Just put this in and we'll come down to... Let's see, historical data. This will tell you all the volume for every single day. It's true, folks. Look at that. Volume of only 10.8 million shares today. That is one third of what she did yesterday. So she's just kind of hanging around in volume. Volume has not spiked. We do need a volume spike. That's the big deal right now. Share structure for HEPA. Well, there's real good news. I haven't seen anything to dispute this. We have a low outstanding share count of less than 6 million. We don't know what the insiders own, but I'm sure they own something. You've got to subtract that from the outstanding share count, and that gives you your float. So we're going to have a very low float. Chances are it's going to be under 5 million, but just being under 10 million is an excellent float, which means we don't need a lot of volume in this stock for it to move. Start getting volume coming in. You don't have a lot of shares. Supply and demand starts to move much quicker. Market cap for HEPA. We're at about 4.2 million. If all the numbers are correct, I do believe they are. Financials for HEPA. 
Well, it's research and development. She's got a lot of things going on, but it all costs money. They're not making money. They just have to keep getting more money from investors until they hit a home run. Quarterlies, there's nothing there either. What's their balance sheet look like right now? Well, in the bank, this company, HEPA, has 2.1 million. Total assets, about 6 million. Liabilities is down there at 2.4. So as it is right now, we have 3.5 million equity in this stock. What did we just read in the news? Together, these two companies are worth 58 million in stockholder equity. So this is a huge jump from 3.5. Hasn't happened yet. It is going to happen. This is a jackpot ready to come to this company. So we are looking at equity coming into the company, but of course it's not all this company's. You've got two companies. One company's gonna get some, the other company's gonna get the other. I think it's something like just under 50% for each one of them. And I don't know where that other small sliver goes. Take a look at the disclosures now for the company. All right, I did go through these. There's your most recent financial. I dove through that to see if there was anything new, something I could have brought to the table. I didn't see anything. This is all before the deal. They do talk about it, but there's nothing extra that, that I could find there. So I went through these. There really wasn't anything here that caught my attention. I didn't see any warnings from NASDAQ or anything like that yet. We are under a dollar. You can't stay under a dollar for too long. If you do, you get a warning by the NASDAQ. They say, get the price up over a dollar for 10 days straight or you're going down to the OTC or you're going to have to do a re reverse stock split. Now, they get six months to do that, but still, the threat is over your head. We don't have that threat yet. So right now, we got a clear table. We've got a catalyst. We've got a merger that is about to happen with the drug that has cleared phase three trials and is for Parkinson's disease. This is a serious unmet need for medical community out there. So now they are asking permission for it to be recognized as a legal drug and get it on the market and sell it. A couple more small steps before they actually start making money, but that's where they're at right now. They've gotten all the R&D done. They've gotten the clinical trials done successfully. Now they're moving into commercialization and that's always exciting. All right. Now you know as much as I do. <laughs> Let's go check out the chart. We're over here at my free trading platform, Thinkorswim, to see what we can see. We're going to chart ticker HEPA. We got it opened up to a six-month, four-hour view. So as you can see, the entire six months, this chart has been in a sad state of affairs. She has been blazing downhill. It was really hard and fast back here. She did calm down a little bit, but she didn't slow down at all. Six months ago, we were at $4.22, and in August, we hit a low of $0.55. Cents. Now, it is this area I'm really looking at, right? We had a nice, strong poke up here, and then immediately fell way down here. And from there, she hit her low, has bounced off of it, crossed through all of her MAs, and has now put herself right here between both of the 200s. Our 200 MA on the top, which is like water underneath, we're underwater right now, and air above it. And then we've got our 200 haul. Our 200 haul is just like the 200 day MA. It takes 200 days worth of prices and averages them together, but it puts more credence on current prices. It's completely a different type of line that can actually relate to the price, and I see a relationship. I see that when it is set up like this and the 200 haul is underneath the price and the price is underneath the 200 MA, I have seen the price jump down to the 200 haul and get slapped, get pushed right straight up to and through the 200. And that's kind of what it's looking like to me right now, folks. Our oscillators, well, our PPO is climbing. It pulled back a little bit, but it is still climbing. Our MACD, well, this is a bit strange, folks. We've got ourselves a divergence here. A divergence is one of your tools doing the opposite of what you expect it to do. Our price is climbing. Our PPO is climbing. But our MACD is falling. That's a strange mathematical equation going on there. And what happens is some sort of reversal. You're going to get a snapback. And the way I like to think of it, if they're going the opposite direction and getting wider, it normally snaps back and gets tight. And that normally is a pullback. 
So we might get that pullback right down to the 200 and a snap right there. Our RSI is pretty cool. It's down there at 50. I don't like to see it any less than 55, but if it's climbing, I really don't mind wherever it's at. But right now she's just going sideways at 50. Before we leave this page, I do need some SNRs, supports and resistances. Supports and resistances are how I get in and out of trades. I'm going to use my Fibonacci on this big surge and pop. We got a big pop going up, a big drop going here, and I'm going to cover the whole thing. Poke the top, bring it down to the bottom, and these are algorithmic supports and resistances not attached to any historical price point, but they are valid. We can use these to trade on. The price is going to respect them. Now, you'll normally see a big one at the bottom and a big one at the top. Generally speaking, folks, you can just split those in half, draw another line right down the middle. I mean, right down the middle, and that is normally pretty good. That's probably where you're going to find a support and resistance as it is. These supports and resistances, folks, tell me when to get in and get out of a trade. That's how I know. What I am looking for is for the price to approach one of these speed bumps. We slow down before we hit the speed bump, right? That's when we get out of these trades because she may back up. She may stop. When you get on the other side of the speed bump, you start picking up speed and driving again. This is normally where I get in because she's then pushing towards the next speed bump, which she'll slow down for. So I get out underneath them and in on top. Right now we are floating on this bottom one. We need to get up to this 50% mark to be in the positive zone. The top half of a big surge like this is all green. The bottom half is all red. We are in the red zone. But I'm thinking that this could probably drop down to this 200 haul and get slapped right through all the MAs to and through the 200. Now, after she breaks out, chances are she's not going to continue to run. She's going to find a ceiling, run out of gas, and come back down. And hopefully, she'll just bounce on top of the 200 MA, which by that time is going to be completely flat. Right now, she is starting to level out. Let's come on down to our 20-day, one-hour view. Wow, look at that 200. We got a bend. Very strong bend right there. Not a gradual curve. That's an angle. That's a strong change in trend. All of our SMAs turned here. Every single one of them turned very sharply. Look, she came underneath. She was under all of her SMAs. Crossed the 20, got on top of the 200 haul. Look at her lay on that 200 haul. Then she pushed down and got snapped. She got smacked right there, folks. Smack through every SMA up to the 200. Boy, it was close, but it was too steep. We can't break out yet. So it backed down, got a bounce off the 20, and now it's going flat, and now it breaks out. She's climbing on her nine-day SMA, hits a ceiling, pulls back, She's pulled back to this strong support here at 74 cents, but you can see over here, she's coming down to that 200. Now, what's important about these bars to notice is the solid part of the bar is above the 200, above the MA. The wick is what goes under the MA. If you only have the wick go under, in many cases, it's just a bounce. That's just a foot coming down to push off. But if you see the head, you see that whole bar come busting through? That's a hole, and you may just fall through that hole and just keep falling. So I do see my MAs here have all crossed. They are all starting to come down now. We don't like this because the price follows these MAs. So she is being pushed down right now. She may dip underneath the 200 and then come back up, and that's when you'll see the run come off. But we've got to see the ebb and flow. That's the way it works, like a biorhythm. Our oscillators, she got a little cool here with her PPO. She's working on coming back up slowly, just like our MACD. We got an imminent crossover about ready to happen. All of our red bars are diminishing. Hopefully, we'll get some green bars coming into the picture here. And our RSI is still very cool because volume is really light. We're still at 50. Looking at our five-day, five-minute. Whoa, look at that last bar at the end of the day. All right, so there's our supports and resistances. We're right on the bottom. This is going to be the ladder we climb out of this pit. And I'm going to be getting in on top of these lines. No, we're not saying right on top. Get up a little bit. If it's at 
a dollar go to a dollar two a dollar three if it's at 50 cents go to 52 53 and when you're going out if it's a dollar 25 come down a couple pennies a dollar 22 a dollar 23 stay off the lines not right on them always a little above or a little below so as you can see we are going sideways big time we had a dip here i always look for a dip after you've been going sideways for a while if you just take this dip for no reason a lot of times you'll see a pounce like a cat it'll just come down a couple inches and then pew, dive way up high well we got a small bounce here but she's still hanging around not showing a lot of enthusiasm we need some volume we've got a low float we've got a catalyst the big piece the big filing is being put in right now which means the merger is going to happen the assets are going to come they are going to have this phase three drug that they're going to be commercializing there's a lot of potential here what we're missing is the one thing we absolutely need volume oscillators are very cool on the five minute everything is either going well it is every single one of them is flat hey look at our rsi <laughs> our rsi is actually climbing right now so I am trying to share stocks with you folks that I feel are going to run. Yesterday we looked at Siffy. Siffy took a big drop right early pre-market and the chart never got straight. It's still trying to come back up right now. I don't have any magical powers. I can't actually tell you what's going to happen. I can just tell you what charts look like and what news there is to back them up. You've got to watch for the volume. You've got to look for those entries and you've got to take those gains, folks. Selling is more important than entry. If you're not taking your gains, you may be getting caught with losses, bags, a lot of bad attitude, a lot of bad days. Just take between, between these supports and resistances. Don't get greedy. Jump out and let 50% ride to the next one and then jump out 50% there and just keep whittling yourself down until it starts to fall and get the heck out of there. And then find another hot play where you're taking pieces. Take your pieces. It's the best way to make money, folks. Thank you for your time. I hope this stock does something for you. Maybe you want to do a little more due diligence before you consider it. I don't blame you. I would too. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. <laughs>